Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. Today, I'm we'll talking about how many wraps are in your coils when you're talking about coil machine science. All right. Okay, now that that's over with, wraps. Mm. Yeah, it's not about a sheet. It's not about music. This is how many times a wire it's turned around a core. So you're gonna see a lot of these ones. I got six wrap, eight wrap, 12 wrap, 20 wrap, all these wraps. But what the heck does that mean? First off, wire is rolled around, moving in one direction as it meets the top, it comes back down. That's why you're always gonna see even numbers because our, num our, our wires are gonna be joined at the bottom to try and output and we can connect and make a circuit, right? So it's always like two, four, six, eight. It's not always, it's not gonna be an odd number unless you have one of those twisty guys who's gonna do a single run up and then have all of the wire coming down in an individual direction, which is like super complex weird shit that we don't have to worry about. <clears throat> you have to have like notches inside of your actual like coil to like start off with this. Anyways, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so. What do the wraps mean? So if we have, we'll just go over this, six, eight, 10, and 12 are the most common amount of wraps that we're gonna see uh, in commercially available tattoo machines. Now, the amount of wraps equals how strong that that magnet is gonna fire, right? It's like a motor. When you think about a motor, the more cylinders in an engine, the more horsepower it can produce. Simple, right? So <clears throat> the greater amount, so we'll go greater, uh, equals more power, but it cycles slower. Why is that? Well, it takes a lot of time, you know, in, in, in electricity's lifetime anyways, for it to charge up those coils so that they fire. The more wraps that you have, the more power that it's gonna to require to actually energize all of them before it will fire. And this is why we usually have different size capacitors. The capacitors are gonna be for timing however many wraps are gonna be in there, uh, as well as dealing with the geometry and your, your, you know, springs. <laughs> <laughs> this is like super complex. I'm trying to keep everything as simple as possible for intro stuff to get into this, right? So all you know is that the greater amount of wraps, the more power, but it's gonna move slower. <clears throat> On average, we're gonna see slower moving machines running into that 10 to 12 wrap and fast ones in the six to eight. Um, most machines that I use that are liners or six wrap coils or eight wraps personally, just because they run like, you know, burnt toast. It's great, they just fire, fire, fire. 10 to 12s are gonna have a lot of power, so those are for your larger groupings, which you can use for, you know, lining as well if you want to, but they really are designed for pushing big groupings like mags and being able to hit them into the skin and not bog out, right? That's it. That's what coil wire wraps is. Wait, we can do one more thing. <laughs> the quality of the actual machine that we're gonna get, right? Because these are just, they're little, they're little motors, these motors. The quality of them is gonna be based on the actual pull quality of the wire. So <clears throat> when they're creating magnet wire, it's pulled through this die and coated with an enamel, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but the longer that that die, that that, uh, that wire has been pulled through is used, the lower the quality of that actual wire is. So the wire inside of it, when it first starts out, it's coming out all nice and smooth and polished. It's just really, really groovy stuff. By the end, it's got a lot of imperfections on top of it. Now, I know you're like, Ryan, well, it still runs like who gives a shit? Well, <clears throat> The increased surface area of these wires means it's actually gonna take more energy to try and get them going, right? Which is gonna make them less efficient at running. So, yeah, it does actually matter. <laughs> if you can find really good pull quality uh, magnet wire, whatever gauge that you're gonna use is fine, it's up to you. Um, you're gonna be able to have a machine that runs cleaner. It's gonna run faster, it's gonna be more consistent, and you're not gonna deal with as much heat because it's not having to overload basically what the quality of that wire is able to contain. And yeah, I guess we can do the gauge of the wire as well. So wire gauge, we're usually gonna get, you know, they, they come color coded for the most part, but the smaller it is, you're gonna have almost the same thing as like the pull quality and this stuff, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's gonna have more wraps 
to actually fill the space where, where you're, you're creating and wrapping your coils, which means that it's gonna require more power and it should actually cycle slower. But there's a caveat on that. Because it's smaller, it can only hold so much power before it burns out. So you'll see load ratings on these and you wanna to try to keep them within it. But just know, usually you're gonna to try to find something that's not really, really big. I mean, imagine having like, I don't know, and friggin' eight gauge wire or something running up and through this stuff, like super duper thick. It's got three turns per side. It's a huge amount of surface area. It's gonna have actually like less, because elect electricity runs on the outside of the wires, it doesn't run through it, right? So they're that big, it'll have this huge amount of stuff rolling around on the outside of it. It's got a great big capacitance and it's gonna take a lot of power to go, but man, it isn't gonna have as much energy or force being pulled down on it because it's just not enough actual energy being applied to that, that, that core. Anyways, I don't wanna get it too off track. If you're looking for good quality coils, talk to the people who are building it, right? You can call up any of those machine builders out there and just see what they use, you know, if you're gonna be ordering something. If you wanna try this at home, go get some cores, spin them, put on your washer tops and bottoms, and try using different, quali like <clears throat> different quality of poles, different gauges, and try different wraps, and just see which ones may work better or more you know, efficient. Anyways, that's the theory behind coil wraps. Thanks for watching. This is Ryan from Better Tattooing, signing off.